Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride. Oh, on the horse open sleigh. Grab a blanket, turn off your lights, and get ready for 10 true Christmas ghost stories. Merry Christmas. A Christmas surprise gift? Okay, something very strange just happened. I was sitting in my favorite chair, and when I got up to head off to bed, I noticed this dark brown oval cardboard, about one to one and a half by two inches, on the seat of my chair. I was sitting on it. I picked it up and turned it over and... It's an old black and white photograph of a lady. It's just her upper body and head, her hairstyle and dress, and the way she was posing look like an early 1900s movie star. On the back is handwritten Danny or Donnie, I think it in pencil. I'd never seen this picture before, no one has been in my place, so I have no idea where this picture came from. It looks like a picture that would have been in a locket. Now, if the locket would materialize, that would be fantastic. Anyways, I'm totally confused as to where this came from. I will try and find a way to get the photo scanned to show you guys, but it may take a few days. Christmas Spirit This incident occurred in 2004. Two days before Christmas, my daughter, age 12 at the time, came to visit and noticed I had not delivered my Christmas cards. She was laughing and joking, stating that my neighbors would give me wrong for leaving it so late, and I was saying, only if they catch us delivering them. It was a cold, miserable night, and the melting snow was making conditions very slippery, so we walked slowly and carefully which gave my daughter the impression that we were sneaking into people's yards, much to her hilarity. At yard number three, I could see my neighbor through his living room window, sitting in his chair. My daughter was struggling to keep her laughing as we crept down his yard. I lifted his letterbox flap without making a sound as my daughter rested her chin on the windowsill, watching in hope that he would discover us. We didn't even turn around to exit the yard, just walked backwards, while watching intently in case we got discovered. We had completed most of our deliveries when I bumped into a friend, and she asked me what we were doing out so late. She said not to deliver a card to number three because JW had died last night. Both my daughter and I informed my friend that we had just seen the gentleman in question so her information was wrong. To her horror, another neighbor confirmed that the gentleman had indeed died, and this put doubts into what we saw earlier that evening. My daughter was not frightened, but was desperate to return to the gentleman's house for another look. When we got there later that evening, the light was still on in the living room, but the chair and house were deserted. My daughter and I questioned each other over the night's events, but as we both had known the gentleman for many, many years, we satisfied ourselves that it was him that we had seen. Christmas Tree attacked my dad. So as everybody knows, Christmas is coming up. I don't know about you, but I've been excited, and it seems since November, everything's been going great. I feel the Christmas spirit in the air. Well anyways, the day after Thanksgiving, my dad put up our new Christmas tree. It's green and beautiful. 
It has three lighting modes, white, multi, and flashing white and multi. We keep it on flashing all the time. Now we only got it out so early to test it, but just a couple of minutes ago, something odd happened. Usually I, I just ignore all supernatural things. I mean, I love the idea. Me and my friends play Ouija board on a paper card, but we don't know if it really works. Nothing happened after we encountered any spirits and all that. But today it was just different. My dad was centering our tree because my mom had been complaining. So he did as told. We stood back looking at it. Me and my mom standing on one side of the room and my dad a bit away. Then suddenly, it spun like a top. Listen, there was no wind, no animals, and my dad didn't even touch it. We were watching him from both angles. It just spun like, like it had a mind of its own. Now this tree is too heavy and sturdy to spin so fast and so easily. Even my dad tried spinning it, but it was not that easy. It stopped after that, until my dad sat down. He began bleeding, and blood was mauled up his forearm. Upon further inspection, it looked like he had been bitten, straight across three marks. Blood smeared. The tree has no spikes and is completely soft all around. Someone help. The tree attacked my dad. I'll give. Now that was scary. As I typed that, my fan in my room suddenly went from low to high. It began shaking and wobbling as it spun. This is scary and I don't know what to do. I called my dad and he set it back to low. Please, someone help me. I don't want anything to happen to me or my family. Boots and green face. One Christmas. My sister and I were sleeping in one of the bedrooms in my grandmother's house. To this day, we both swear there were boots poking out from under one of the curtains, even though we immediately turned on the lights and there was none. When I was around 10 or so, all our aunts and uncles on my mom's side we're holding a communal yard sale in my grandmother's front yard. Every one of them was outside with the sale, and my boy cousins were all in the street, playing street hockey. So us girls were inside playing with our dolls. We suddenly heard what sounded like one of the large tables move in the basement, like it was dragged across the floor. It scared us for a minute, but we shrugged it off thinking, maybe someone had come in without us seeing or that it was slid down the wall slightly or something, so we went back to playing. Now, I had moved all the chairs in the kitchen back as hard against the dining tables as I could to give us as much room to play as possible. We all heard a sudden scrape come from the dining area, so we stopped to look, and right in front of us, one of those kitchen chairs moved itself back from the table, turned itself around to face where we were playing, and then there was the impression on the seat that someone just sat down in it to watch us. We ran from the house, screaming. My mother was sitting right next to the only open door, trying to be logical and not to freak out. I asked my mother if anyone was just inside moving stuff around. She said that she'd been sitting there for over an hour and no one had gone inside. Of course, she didn't believe us. I've seen fleeting images in my mirror in my grandmother's living room for many years. I couldn't even look into it for fear of what I would see. When I was 12, my parents, my grandmother, and one of my aunts and uncles were in the dining room chatting and drinking coffee. I was in the living room dancing to Michael Jackson. I looked up at the big picture window in the living room and there was a six-foot-high green face with pointed ears and pointed eyes 
with cat pupils looking at me. It had a thin green mouth, and when I noticed it, it smiled, showing piercing sharp fangs. I screamed and ran to my parents, who came into the living room, and of course, it was gone. They told me I had seen someone playing a joke wearing a mask. I told them that no human face would be six feet tall. To this day, I can't draw the picture of what I saw, but I never saw it again. Paranormal Santa Claus? This has eaten at me since I was a child. I was about seven years old, and it was Christmas Eve. My dad was working late, and I was extremely sick. So I slept in my dad's spot in my parents' bed that night with my mom. The bed was positioned where you could see out the door and have a clear view of our Christmas tree as you were lying down. Suddenly, my mom taps me to wake me up and puts her hand over my mouth to keep me from saying something. She just points out the door in silence. I look down and there stood a man or something that looked like a man facing the tree with his back turned in a big red suit and hat. To be honest, it looked just like Santa Claus. He was huge. He stood as tall if not taller than our tree. I've never seen anyone this tall. We watched him for maybe 45 seconds. Then he reached in his pocket and grabbed something and flicked his hand. Then streams of what looked like purple light just hit the tree. I was so shocked I couldn't believe it. Then suddenly, I blinked. And he was gone. Just disappeared. The only people in the house were my brother and sister and neither of them were near that tall. And on top of all that, their rooms were completely across the house. My mom was concerned afterwards and took me with her to check on my siblings. I just want to know what I saw that night and if Santa maybe really is real. <laughs> I'm 17 now and I just want to dig into it a bit more. The Christmas Ghost Going back to 1988, I was on holidays in a small country town in Australia. I was up from Sydney where I was working, and I was up visiting my parents. We went out to some Christmas party and came back a bit later that night, Christmas Eve, 1988. I went straight to bed for I was buggered and dozed off. It was around about 1 a.m. when I was rudely woken up by someone whacking me hard on the left ankle. I sat up, frowning, and saw this man, dressed in a tartan suit and wearing a tartan hat with the pom-pom on it, and he looked really pissed off about something. He's leaning on a stick, but I couldn't make out his features. I remember he had gray hair and that's about all I can remember of him, except he was pointing at something. I watched him. He turned around and walked through the door. I wasn't freaked out or anything, I just shrugged and went back to sleep. I told my mom the next day, and she sat me down and said she kept seeing a little old woman standing at the bottom of her bed, holding a pillow in her hands and ready to smother my mother. I also saw shadows of someone walking down the hall, but yet 
there was no one there. Tis the season to dust off those old ghost stories. I've told this story before. It just popped up in my mind as it was getting darker sooner and colder. Winter will be here shortly. Last year or maybe the year before, something was playing games with me. As I was walking back to my bedroom one evening, I felt a sudden and very cold chill in the air. I raised the thermostat a couple of degrees, but the furnace didn't start. So, I walked towards the basement door. I opened the door, and the basement was solid black. No light at all. I walked down three steps, and I was uncomfortable because there were no working light bulbs. I was picking up some very strange vibes. There were no basement lights on. I always leave one particular bulb to burn all winter long. I turned around and walked up the steps to exit the basement, and I was careful to close the basement door. Things didn't feel right. I searched and found one light bulb I could use in the basement. I walked through the house with no lights on. Moonlight is sufficient for me. With the light bulb in my hand, I opened the basement door. The light in the basement is on by itself. I reset the furnace and everything was in good order. I was done and headed for the stairs and shut the basement door for good measure. I thought maybe I was imagining things. The fact that I took exactly three steps down into the basement proves there was no light on anywhere in the basement. It also proved that I was really on the stairs and not in some dark spot in the house. There was no light switches at the top of the basement stairs. I carefully avoided touching the light bulb and the string tied to the switch. That light bulb burned 24 hours a day until sometime in late March. I concluded that there had to be an intelligent force to do one of two things. It could perhaps conceal the working light bulb to prevent light from being seen, or there was a string switch that was being used to turn the light on and off. Either way, it was interrupting normal activity in the house. It knew I was returning to the basement with a fresh light bulb. When I opened the basement door and there was all this light, I was a little unsettled. It waited to turn the light back on so I get maximum exposure to that light. I didn't touch the now working light bulb or its string or on and off switch. I've also found hand tools in odd places. I've had a pair of lineman's pliers that are hard to keep track of. I woke up one day and found them near the foot of my bed. I didn't put them there. And I certainly didn't do any work with them. I'm fairly sure some kind of intelligent being is trying to get my attention. I've got my own ideas about how things should be. I don't want any invisible visitors. Charles Dickens found that Christmas season was full of ghosts. I like some of the stories he's written. That doesn't mean I want beings like him hanging out with me. A Christmas Visitor About eight years ago, I was five. I am now thirteen. I lived in this house, which is believed to be haunted. Since I was young, I didn't really believe this stuff, because at that age, kids sometimes think what people tell you are just made up. Just a joke to scare you. It was Christmas Eve, and everything was normal. I went to bed early so that Santa could come to my house faster. I laid awake in bed thinking about all the neat presents I would be getting the next day. I thought about all the toys, pretty clothes, candy, and other stuff kids get for Christmas. I discovered that, by thinking about all this, caused me to gain no progress in getting to sleep. 
So, I pushed the excitement aside and soon fell asleep. That morning, I woke up and like every normal kid, I realized that it was Christmas morning and jumped out of bed fast. I then ran to my parents' bedroom where they were still sound asleep and woke them up, shouting, Wake up! It's Christmas! They sleepily crawled out of bed and told me to go to the living room. While they went to the bathroom to help themselves wake up, I was anxiously waiting near the tree, staring at all my presents. I knew I couldn't open a present until my parents told me I could, so I just tried to guess what I had gotten. I then walked over to the couch and sat impatiently. At that moment, in front of me, I saw the apparition of a 15-year-old girl holding one of my presents. She then held it out to me and said, Here you go, open it. When I told her no, she put it back under the tree. At that moment, my parents walked into the room and she disappeared. When I told my parents what I saw, they didn't believe me. A Sad Christmas Eve It was the first holiday without our father, and we felt very strange. It was a tossed salad of emotions. On one hand, it was for the best. Our parents just didn't get along. The fighting was terrible, and we hid in our rooms as we listened to the bickering. Finally, it was over. They sat us down one day and told us they were getting divorced. We knew it was a good thing. And in a way, I was relieved. No more listening to the grown-ups act like children. This is what it felt like. I took charge of the younger kids and I, and I kept them away from the slaps that rang out. When daddy and mother lost their tempers. Anyways, daddy moved on, and mother, well, she did the best she could, I guess. That first year was really hard, but we tried to find normality in everyday playing, going to school, you know, just, just being kids. The first Christmas was a somber affair, and we've been told in advance that there just wasn't enough money for presents that year. I hope my daddy didn't have much to do with it, but I suspected he wasn't sending much if any child support. We were barely getting by as it was. I was a sickly kid. Something was always happening to me, but I understand it all now. As someone was sensitive with gifts, my body was under tremendous effort. Anyways, not, not to dwell on that aspect of my story, I want to tell you about the first Christmas we lived without father. My brother was being fitted in a costume. He was going to be playing an angel in the Christmas story. I kept arguing with mother and telling her the costume wasn't right. Angel wings are bigger, wider, with large arches where it curved downwards. I remember my brother saying, how would you know he laughed? I was indignant, but couldn't say a thing back. I had seen real angels, and I knew what their wings looked like. <laughs> Who would believe me anyways? So I stayed silent, fuming at myself. 
the evening progressed, and my mother was sitting in her chair next to the doorway of my bedroom. We were listening to Christmas music and reading. All of us kids were laying around on the carpet, quiet for once, engrossed in whatever we were doing. I caught a glimpse of something to my right. So I looked up at the movement. In the doorway to our bedroom stood an old man. He had on high-waisted pants with suspenders and a plaid shirt. I remember blurting out, Who, who's that man? My mother looked up from her book and said very matter of fact, Oh, that's her great grandfather. That would make him my grandfather. He died before I was born and he likes to visit during the holidays. I'd never seen him around in the past. My brothers and sisters were looking at me and mother like we had just lost our minds. She went on to explain that she had been given just one picture of him. And when he manifested himself, he always appeared in these clothes. What man? My brother sputtered. I don't see anybody. One of my sisters tripped up. By the time everyone was through commenting on what had just transpired, the old man was gone. He didn't say a thing, had never lived in this old house, and had died in another country. It was the first and only time my mother wanted to discuss the ghost of her grandfather, and she didn't say much. As soon as he was gone, she acted like it never happened. After this, we never discussed the paranormal again. Over the years, I think she liked to think of it as, as her own little secret. I can't explain it here, but she was a bit of a narcissist. I wondered why he showed himself to just me and my mother. Any ideas? The Christmas Spirit My Mother's Story Although my mother would not say she believed in ghosts, she would not deny their existence either. As she put it, just in case one is listening and decides to give proof. However, she was not without her own experiences as the following account shows. It was Christmas Eve, 1946, in the project of Chicago. The twins were about eight years old, and my oldest brother was only two. My mother was saddened that there would be no Santa for them that year. Although the Great Depression had ended, America was still struggling. My dad brought home about $15 a week, almost $9 would be set aside to pay the rent on their small apartment. That didn't leave much left to live on for a family of five. And every penny was earmarked just for survival. She had been waiting for my father to return from work so that she could go to the grocery store to pick up a few much needed items. Mrs. Bowman, a neighborhood lady, knocked on the door with a message from my father he would be home later than expected, and she should go on without him. My parents didn't have a phone. She even offered to sit the kids, as it was getting dark, and my mother had to hurry to get there before the store closed. In those days, store closed pretty early on Christmas Eve. Winter can be bitter in Chicago, and the wind bit my mom's bare legs and sliced through her old coat as she walked the four blocks to the store. She was nearly frozen as she approached the store's parking lot. She felt something wrap itself around her ankle. Looking down and pulling it off, she saw it was a $5 bill. 
a small fortune in those days. She looked about for its owner, someone who might have dropped it, even though she was sorely tempted to just cram it into her pocket. Then she saw a man, standing nearly hidden in the shadows. Excuse me, but have you lost something? He took a step from the shadows. She was struck by the fact that although he didn't appear dressed for the cold, as he only wore a jacket, he didn't appear cold. He smiled at her, the most beautiful smile she had ever seen. Yes, ma'am. Five dollars to be exact. Th then this is yours. She extended the bill towards him. Keep it. Get the kids something nice. My mother's jaw fell open. The second half of what he said wouldn't hit her until later. Are you sure? It's an awful lot. But the man had already turned walking away, cutting across a section of fresh snow. Thank you. Merry Christmas. She called after him as she assumed he disappeared into the darker shadows. But as she was confused about this, he left no prints in the snow where he walked. She went and took a good look when she finished shopping, but her Christmas miracle didn't end there. Inside on a long table was an assortment of plastic toys. She quickly chose two plastic dress me dolls and a red fire truck. The owner of the store was working the counter, and he placed some candy into her bag telling her to hush when she objected. He knew our family and wanted to be allowed to spoil those babies just a little. My mother says that she had never had a full bag of groceries felt so light to carry on the walk home. Back home, Mrs. Bowman left and returned with some fabric scraps she thought were big enough to create outfits for the dolls with. Soon, they had the kids fed and put down and they busied themselves with sewing tiny dresses until my father came home, lugging behind him a small tree. The reason he was late was he had the chance to work for a friend at a Christmas tree lot and this one was left over. The friend let him have it and paid him a whopping 50 cents to boot. You can say coincidence and folks being kind to you all you want, my mother would say when telling the story, but tell me. What kind of man could possibly know I had kids and leave no prints in the snow, except for a Christmas spirit? <laughs>